Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're going to talk about adding fractions with denominators of 10 and 100. So we'll start with the real basics here. We have two fractions here, 6 tenths plus 4 tenths. You'll notice they have the same denominator, common denominators, which means this is super duper easy. We can just add them as is. When we're adding fractions, we keep the denominator the same as long as we have common denominators, and we add the numerator. 6 plus 4 is 10. We end up with 10 tenths, which we know is 1 whole. Super duper easy if you have common denominators. All right, let's look at this next simple example. 27 hundredths plus 15 hundredths. Well, once again, we'll notice that we have common denominators, 100 for each of these fractions. So we know we're gonna keep our denominator the same, 100. 27 and 15 is a little bit harder to add in my head. So just to be safe, I'm gonna put the numerators over here and stack them and add them carefully. Seven plus five is 12, I'll regroup. One plus two is three, plus one is four, and I get 42. And my answer is 42 hundredths. It's a regular old fraction. It's not improper, so I don't have to do anything to fix it. So sometimes we're really lucky and we get fractions to add that already have common denominators and end up proper. But that is not always the case. What do we do if one denominator is 10 and the other is 100? And that is what I am going to show you right now. So if we look at this addition problem, we have 4 tenths plus 13 one hundredths. So in order to do this, we need to get common denominators. We need to make these fractions have common denominators without changing the value of the fraction itself. Luckily, when we have multiples of 10, it's not that difficult to do. It would be really easy for me to turn 4 tenths into a fraction that has a hundredth as the denominator. And I hope you're thinking what I'm thinking right now. I'm gonna take that four tenths and I'm gonna multiply the numerator and the denominator both by 10. If I multiply both of them by the same number, I get an equivalent fraction. And I end up with 40 one hundredths. Now if I add 40 one hundredths plus 13 one hundredths, I have common denominators. So now I am in a good spot. I can just bring my denominator over and now I can add 40 plus 13. That's kind of easy for me to add in my head, but just in case I'm gonna stack them over here, 40 plus 13, zero plus three is three, four plus one is five, and I end up with 53 hundredths as my answer. Not too bad. All right, so there's one more situation you may encounter. All right, so this is an example of figuring out a way to add two fractions where the denominator is a multiple of 10, but they're not the same. And I have the same situation here, but there's gonna be even another step. So I have 26 one hundredths plus nine tenths. Take a minute and think about which fraction I am going to change so that these denominators are the same. All right, and if you said we're gonna change 9 tenths by multiplying the numerator and the denominator by 10, you were right. 9 tenths, multiply the numerator by 10 and the denominator by 10, and I end up with 90 one hundredths. Okay, so if I add 26 one hundredths plus 90 one hundredths, I am in luck that I have a common denominator of 100. Now I am going to stack 90 and 26, my numerators, so I can carefully add them. Zero plus six is six, nine plus two is 11. And I get 116 one hundredths, but I'm not done. And I bet if you have been paying attention these last few weeks, you know why. This is an improper fraction. The numerator is larger than the denominator. So I need to make it a proper fraction. Since one whole is represented by the number in the denominator, 
I need to ask myself, how many one holes can I get out of the numerator? How many one hundreds can I get in 116? Well, I know if I go from 100 to 200, I'm already over 116. So I can get one hole. And then I know one hole is 100 and I have 16 left over. So that is my new numerator. And that is my denominator. So the way to convert this improper fraction to a mixed number is change it from 116 one hundredths to 1 and 16 one hundredths. So that one took a few steps, but it wasn't too bad. All right, ladies and gentlemen, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me or rewatch this video. Um, good luck with the assignment today, and I will talk to you soon.